The world of playing card art is just unreal. There are tons of creators in the card magic, cardistry community that contribute to this area. But not only that, there are creators outside of this community that are designing beautiful playing cards. What up crew and welcome back to another deck review. I love when my intros rhyme. Like I mentioned like 10 seconds ago, today we're gonna to be taking a look at two decks of playing cards sent to me by Tobias Vissery. And Tobias, I'm really hoping that I'm pronouncing your last name correctly. But thank you Tobias for sending me these. Both of these decks are designed by Tobias and to some extent they're actually quite similar, but the deeper you look into these playing cards, the design, the symbolism, what they kind of represent is completely different. So I'm excited for this one. I've never reviewed two decks at once. So uh, we'll break it down, do one deck first and then the other one later. Let's do it. The Apocalypse playing cards are manufactured by a company called Print Ninja. You're probably not familiar with them, but they do a lot of types of printing, which includes playing cards. Definitely a good company to go to if you don't want to print like a massive amount of playing cards at once. I know the United States Playing Card Company, you have to print a minimum of 1,000 decks and like that's that's about it. But I think the minimum with Print Ninja is around 500. So there's that comparison. So before we take a look into the deck itself, let me give you a little bit of background. When Tobias first started thinking about the Apocalypse playing cards, she wanted to go more towards the route of the four elements, which is fire, water, earth, and air. But she saw there was already many of those playing cards in production. So she decided to take a much darker approach and take a look at the four horsemen of the apocalypse, which is war, famine, death, and plague. Dark stuff. Taking a look at the front of the tuck case, you can see it's actually the back design of the playing cards themselves. And on the back of the tuck case, um, it talks a little bit about the theme of the whole deck, along with uh, showing the symbols for war, famine, death, and plague. Then when you come over to the bottom, it gives you a sample of the court cards. On the left side of the tuck case, this is high quality linen texture. On the right side, this is Apocalypse playing cards. And then on top, it also says Apocalypse playing cards. And then on the bottom, we can see a barcode and it also says printed in PRC. Not exactly sure what that is though. All right, let's take these babies out. Okay, here we go. So just taking a look at this, the back design of the cards actually looks better than it did on the front of the tuck case. It feels like it has much more depth and I would say that's mainly because of the colors, right? So we kind of see like the golden layer that's most closest to us. Then there's like a brownish layer a little bit in the background that kind of looks like it's just fading away into the darkness. And then of course the black is just total darkness. So I, I actually like that depth that the um, back design has. And in Tobias's own words, the entire back design is rotationally and mirror symmetric with the exception of a central single horse skull right in the middle. So let's take a look at the faces. I'll say starting with the two jokers. And from my interpretation, based on the description of the deck, the two extra cards aren't meant to actually be jokers, but they're supposed to represent a being of a higher power, like a god. And like I said, the theme of this deck is to represent the four horsemen, which are most well seen on the aces. And uh, the pips and indices are kind of what's shown on the aces, but a bit of a shrunk down and less detailed version. First up, we have War, which is a city in flames and a couple of weapons that you can see on the right hand side. Next, we have Plague, which is an insect, of course, with some uh, crossbones on it. Uh, then we have Death. Um, of course, the main design is the skull, as you know, that's usually what represents death. And it has some scythes, along with some gravestones. If you look very closely, it has some gravestones uh, right on the handle, gravestone and crosses. And then an hourglass to represent that time will ultimately be everything's death. And lastly, we have famine, which looks like a rotten apple core. And on the left half, it has a scrawny man sitting under a dead tree with like uh, an eaten apple. And then on the right side, you can see vultures hovering around a very thin horse, just waiting for it to die. So they can just pounce, what's the right word for it? So they can feast, let's just say that. And like I said before, the pips and indices are all custom. And you can see that the pips placement on these playing cards, like on the four resembles how it would on like a, a four of spades or four of diamonds with um, again, the placement being exactly the same. So that's kind of nice. The symbolism on these designs is actually unreal. Like I wish I could do these with my designs, you know, if I was even a designer. Now, let me show you the face cards without going into a whole lot of detail, but you can definitely see the amount of work and effort that's gone in um, to these designs and just the, the amount of symbolism that you see uh, with every single one.
overall a very well designed deck definitely not the best for handling but also not the worst of course it's not made with the intention of magic or cardistry but i would 100 percent use it for gameplay and then cardistry it, it somewhat works so it's definitely usable there as well okay maybe not the best for cardistry but you know gameplay for sure the next deck is the avian playing cards designed by nice funny games that's right nice funny games I've never actually heard of the company, but when I took a quick glance at their website, I saw they're a manufacturer of custom games. And playing cards are included in games. So some background about this deck, it's all about the ornithologist in you. Ornithology, noun, the scientific study of birds. Taking a quick glance, you can actually see this tuck case is textured versus the apocalypse playing card. So I feel like this is definitely a, a, a nicer move up. It feels nice. I can just touch this all day. The overall design of the tuck is very similar to the Apocalypse playing cards. The front has the back design of the playing cards. Obviously, the playing cards just don't say avian playing cards. Um, the back has the, uh, it shows the four suits along with a bit of a description on the theme. And then a couple of sample cards here near the bottom. And then on the left side of the tuck case, it says high quality card stock. On the right side, it says avian playing cards. On top, it says avian playing cards. And then on the bottom, you can see a barcode and it says printed in P. RC. Still don't know what that is. Let's open these up as well. Okay, well. What the? I did it. All right, so, oh God, man, my initial, initial thoughts. The handling of this deck is not good compared to the last one. Last one was definitely like, you know, decently bearable. This one is, I doesn't seem like I can do much with this deck. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. But anyway, the back design of the avian playing cards are very similar actually to the apocalypse playing cards, at least in terms of the color scheme and like the depth perception we were talking about earlier. But as you can see, it is filled with many beautiful designs of birds. Let's take a look at the jokers first. They're supposed to be pet birds that are playing with toys as you can kind of clearly see. And then you see a feather on the, I guess, top left and bottom right corners. And since they are jokers, that feather is actually supposed to be in the shape of a J, which is kind of like a nice add little touch. Looking at the cards themselves, I actually love how the pips of the suits are designed. It's actually quite cool. The hearts is uh, two birds that are facing each other. Uh, the spade is a diving bird. The diamond is a peacock. And the club is a mother with its baby birds. Like, come on, that is so well thought out. So let's take a look at the court cards for this deck. Overall, again, I think the design is really on point for this deck as well. You can really tell that uh, the same creator has uh, designed both of these decks as they had many similarities in their designs, but they were also very different in theme, which is actually quite cool. So if you love the design, but didn't like the theme of one deck, you can literally just move over to the other deck and it's gonna be very similar, just the theme that you actually want. So personally, I like the handling of the Apocalypse deck better than the Avian. Um, as well as the level of symbolism that the Apocalypse deck had for its designs. But I do think the birds designed in the Avian deck look very nice, and you can you can really see the intricate details that went into designing uh, each and every bird. Like, uh, come on, like that is that is impressive. So there you have the review for both of these decks. If you'd like to get more background information on these playing cards that talks about the design or conceptualization of these cards, you can visit Tobias's website. I'll put the link to them down in the description. And it talks about both the uh, avian playing cards as well as the apocalypse playing cards. And I'd say it's definitely worth the read. And if you'd like to purchase these decks for yourself, you can get them on Etsy. I'll put the link to both of these decks down in the description below as well. I feel like it's always important to support small businesses and individual creators because it really helps the community as a whole. So I hope you get the chance to go ahead and at least check these out. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to check out more deck reviews, you can click on that playlist right over there. I have done quite a bit on this channel, so I don't think you'd you know run out anytime soon. So uh, that being said, hope to see you there, or if not, then have a great day ahead, and I'll see you soon.